Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich here. We got to talk about Invest 97L. This is basically future Helene. This is going to be a pretty nasty storm and I'm going to explain why, but I'm also going to explain why we don't have all the details yet. So there's a lot of information out there on the web. I know I get asked about it daily. Don't look at specific model runs. Focus on a broader picture right now until this forms and gets going. We really just can't focus on specifics, especially three or four days from now when we need to get this thing to form first. So let's start with the big picture. And I think this is really, really important. Here's our system down here. We've got a cold front and a stalled backdoor front in the Carolinas. This will be a player eventually for folks inland for some heavy rain, but for the Gulf Coast, it's all about the warm water ahead. Let's zoom in on this area. You can see where the circulation is at least centered right now. It's a little bit further east than yesterday. And if you watched or followed me online, you know, I was showing the thunderstorms blowing up east. It does look like the system has shifted a little bit further east and just further evidence of that in the satellite loop this morning. You can see from morning to um, afternoon as we're starting to get some daylight down there, you can see the curve structure right there is the circulation. So right there to me, there's definitely indications on satellite that the center is somewhere there. The good news, the hurricane hunters will be heading out there later today to give us better information. And honestly, the model runs are probably not that great to look at for many reasons, but one, we don't know where the center is. And once the hurricane hunters get out there, we'll have a center. And why is that important? Well, to calculate the track and forward speed and all that, we've got to get where the actual center is because most of the math being done on these numerical models that you see, some of them pick the center over here, over here, down here. We need to have a, a coalescence or um, some kind of consensus on where the center is. And right now it looks like clearly from the satellite imagery, it's somewhere right there. So let's look at some guidance here to kind of uh, talk a little bit about some of uh, the, the things we're looking at right now in the ensembles. Now, this is kind of the approach I think is the best way to look at modeling. Um, far too often I see a lot of people online and I'm not, I mean, there's a bunch of hobbyists out there, but people focus on specific tracks. The thing you need to look at is all of the models kind of blended together. We call these ensembles. It's not one simulation, it's hundreds of simulations done every six, 12 hours or so, and then giving us some idea of where the mean or the average is. It's the best way to look at this. What that does, it eliminates crazy outliers, left, right, too strong, too weak, and gives you kind of a better forecast. So you can see the left edge of the, of the ensemble envelope is about New Orleans. The right edge is about Fort Myers. But if you look in the middle, you see this area of reddish orange, which is kind of important because that shows the confidence in the forecast is that actually moderate to high, which honestly this early um, with a system that is just forming is actually pretty stunning. But you see basically from the central Gulf Coast to the East Coast needs to pay attention. Now it doesn't mean you're out of the woods if you're outside of this area, but it does give us some confidence that these areas right in here need to be paying particular attention. And for that reason, I'm going to show you this graphic, which I use a lot, but I think it's the best way to approach this. So if you're in the areas in green, you need to be in ready mode, which means build a hurricane kit, have a plan and pay attention to the forecast, not just daily, but multiple times a day. Remember, every six to 12 hours, we're getting new model guidance. The hurricane hunters head out there today. So you just can't tune in or pay attention for one part of the day. If you live in these areas, you know the drill. This is the, this is part of the, the reason that you live on the coast is the great weather and the beaches, but another part of that responsibility of living there is paying attention during hurricane season. So we're in the ready stage. Now, if I were to start getting the set stage, I would start probably focusing on here, but we're not quite there yet because we don't have a forecast cone. Once the cone is put out, which might be as soon as today or tonight, um, you're going to you're going to be in the set stage, which means you need to uh, plan and prepare and possibly evacuate. So let's get into some of what's steering this system. Um, we'll kind of show you the modeling here. I'm going to focus a little bit on, on the on the guidance overall, but this is kind of the big pattern here. And one of the things we're noticing as we get into the middle of the week is this big blue area in the middle of your screen. This is actually going to be an area where a cutoff low is going to get cut off from the jet stream. And you'll see it there kind of moving over, let's say, Arkansas and Memphis. So I'm going to pause it right there. Here's our, our tropical entity, if you will. I'll move this down here. So our tropical entity is down here. OK, we've got high pressure off the southeast coast. We've got a big ridge of high pressure here and we've got a little bit of a cutoff low developing here. So the flow around high pressure is clockwise. So you see that flow, the flow around low pressure is counterclockwise. So 
if you see the steering currents initially, this thing's going to want to go up in this area. That's why the focus is right in here. Okay, makes sense, right? If we go forward a little bit more, you can see that ridge of high pressure off the East Coast builds south. So it gets over the East Coast, Southeast Coast, Carolinas, Florida, and it starts building and the jet stream cuts off this low, which is back to the West. So what does that do? Well, eventually this storm can't go too far East because this blocking high is gonna keep it. Now, the question is how close to Florida this has happened. These are unknowns right now. I'm gonna tell you what we know, but I'm also gonna tell you we don't know. So there's a lot of uncertainty with where that high develops. But either way, you're probably gonna see a lot of the guidance or modeling try to take this up towards Florida. And then at some point, it's gonna to wanna to go back to the West because of this low pressure system, this upper low, and it might try to wrap around or kind of pivot call this the Fujiwara effect, it might orbit around. So you might get some kind of stall in this vicinity. So there's a lot of moving parts, but this ridge is key. It's over water, so we don't have great sampling. And I did see with the schedule, the um, high, the synoptic uh, Gulf Stream for um, Hurricane Hunter, it's not Hurricane Hunter, it's actually an upper air and um, recon plane. It goes out ahead of the storm. and will probably drop some drop sons out here and get an idea of what's going on in the upper atmosphere to see um, you know where the storm is going to go. So when we look at the ensembles, this is this is why you're seeing this weird shape, you know, to the system. It's basically going to travel northwest. It tries to go towards Florida and then curve. So if you're seeing this weird kind of almost S curve or reverse S curve, that's the reason. You've got a couple different elements tugging it left and right or east and west in this scenario. Now let's talk about intensity. Intensity is one of the hardest things to forecast, but I will caution you. The thing that has me paying attention is the warm water ahead of this. So this system is over very warm water, not just warm. I would call it hot water and deep hot water. So as it travels through the Yucatan Channel, it could move right over what we call the loop current, which is the warmest water in the Gulf of Mexico. If it moves over any area in here, it is going to have the ability to probably rapidly intensify at some point. In fact, there's a 35% chance of rapid intensification here in the next couple of days. There's another chance as it gets to the central Gulf. So through the middle of the week, you're looking at the potential of this being a significant storm. Um, as far as intensity, um, it definitely looks like a major hurricane. I will, I'll give you that major hurricane or higher possible. Um, regardless of strength, the impacts are gonna be pretty devastating somewhere on the coast. So I would not focus whole, solely on the category. I would focus on the fact that this is going to be a significant storm and you need to pay attention to the system. So we'll go back and kind of show you the future cast here just real quickly to give you a rough idea on where it's heading. All right, let's get right to the future cast. And I will preface this all the time that this is just one idea. Don't look at the specifics. We're in the range where you need to focus on the bigger picture. So um, don't look, well, it's actually in this specific point. Look at generalities in this situation. So we'll go through today. Um, into tomorrow you can see um, this thing ramps up quickly the closed isobars or those lines tell you this is going to be a strong system it could go from tropical depression to hurricane in less than 24 hours like i said there's a good chance of rapid intensification here um, but we'll get towards the middle of the week so this is going to be wednesday i'm going to get to uh, thursday morning so this is early thursday morning couple things to note somewhere again it could it be right there yeah but look in this general area Somewhere here, we're going to have a system, but look at all the impacts. Rain is actually going to be pretty far north and east of the system. So who cares where the center is? You need to focus on where this rain, wind, and surge is. That's why impacts are the most important thing to focus on, not where the center of the storm is. So what's happening is we've got this stalled front, which will be over the southeast. So for folks in the Carolinas, this is going to be a big rainmaker. We've got the high pressure off the east coast. So everything's going to be funneling moisture into the southeast so for the carolinas in particular and i'm talking to my carolina folks because that's where I, i'm based out of flash flooding huge huge flash flooding risk here in florida the gulf coast huge surge wind and flash flooding so three risks that you or impacts you got to deal with you see as we go through time and get towards the weekend you know somewhere and i don't think it's going to tampa i think it's probably going to be the big bend area of the florida panhandle but you can see somewhere in here we're going to have a tropical storm hurricane whatever you want to call it with major impacts It'll be a hurricane, trust me, but the, the intensity is going to be how, you know, what we're questioning about. But as we get towards the end of the week, look at all the rain up here into the southeast and heavy rain spreads 
not only along the track, but again, remember, everyone's focused on the center and that's what the cone is tracking. What you need to focus on is look at the impacts. The impacts are this big. The center is this little skinny line. So don't focus on the skinny line as much as you're focusing on the impacts in your area. And that's a lot of rain, folks. I mean, that is a ton of rain for Friday into the weekend. And then you see it kind of merges with that upper low and could be across the area for a while. And so this means potential for very, very heavy rain. So with very heavy rain, you worry about flash flooding. This is the excessive rainfall outlook for day one, which is today, there's tomorrow, there's Wednesday, here's Thursday, and here's Friday. You can see the slight risk or what we call medium risk will be taking over most of our area. And then you look at the totals. Um, some of the totals could be super impressive here. We'll kind of show you the totals here um, of, of the actual amount of precipitation. I've, bouncing around here but this is the seven day rainfall forecast over the southeast and you could see um, the huge amounts of rain here over possibly coastal florida into southern alabama and mississippi and possibly southern georgia um, and even southeast louisiana but look it up here in the carolinas you see these upslope areas this is where we're going to have strong southeast winds interacting with the blue ridge mountains and if you look closely here i'll zoom in on, on the carolinas here in a minute um, you'll see some of these totals coming out of the mountains are approaching 10 inches or above. So this is a significant flash flood risk to the mountains of North Carolina, upstate South Carolina, Northeast Georgia. This is gonna have the potential to have a huge impact on parts of our area in the form of rain. On the coast, obviously hurricane conditions. So I'll go back to this graphic. This is all I can tell you right now. I will update this later today. Please be in ready stage. In fact, I might stretch the ready stage up into the Carolinas because of the potential for flash flooding. I know this was a long vlog, a lot going on. There's a lot of unknowns still. Um, I like to lay it all out there and give you the best idea of what's happening. The best thing I could tell you now, regardless of where you are, pay attention to the forecast four times a day. Don't do it once, four times a day. And make sure you're listening to local credible meteorologists. There will be a lot of nonsense out there, a lot of model runs, a lot of just social media posts. Get somebody you trust and who you've been with for a while, could be me, could be anybody, but somebody who's going to be there throughout the storm and get you ready for this. This could be a big one, folks, especially with the warm water in the eastern Gulf of Mexico. I will post vlogs every day this week and continue to post updates on my social media channels. Please spread the word. I'll try to post the best information possible um, to keep everybody safe across the southeast.